Welcome to another episode of the State of African Agriculture. Today we have Bright Deborah Ajay from Ghana. He's a private cocoa consultant and cocoa production franchise owner from Ecom Ghana. We'll be discussing the recent ban of raw cocoa export in Ghana. Recently, President Nana Akufo Addo said, Ghana cannot continue to maintain economic structures that are dependent on the production and exportation of raw materials. They need to add value to raw materials, industrialize, and enhance agricultural productivity. Join me as I discuss with Bright. Bright, thank you for joining me today. How are you today? Welcome. I'm good. How are you too? Fine, thank you. So Ghana, we're going to dis- we're discussing the recent ban of raw cocoa export in Ghana. Ghana is the second largest producer of cocoa in the world. 80% of the cocoa produced is exported in raw form, with Switzerland being the biggest market. You have worked in the cocoa value chain for over seven years, specifically exporting cocoa in raw form, from purchasing, grading, sealing, evacuation, and storing. How has this new export ban policy benefited or impacted you and other stakeholders in the value chain? Uh, it's, honestly, it's, it, it, it has had a negative effect on, on, on us. Because now there's no money to pay cocoa farmers. And they are always on our neck as to when we are going to pay them for the beans we purchase from them and there are commissions there are some profits they are supposed to get that that's all not coming now and honestly we don't even know when we, they are going to be paid so it's it's hard it's, it has got had a negative effect on us so are you saying that there's no one currently ex, um, processing right now Mostly during the main season, we don't we don't process cocoa here in Ghana. We export to them. Okay. Yeah. So what what is the option since they banned the export of the raw form? What is the what's the other uh, what's the other alternative? The other alternative is for us to process our cocoa here, but for now nobody is processing them. So. The cocoa are stuck at the pot as we as we speak now. Are you telling me that there is no current processor? There's nobody currently processing, or there are no processors available. Pro, there are processors available, but not in large quantities. Because we process around thirty percent of our cocoa here in Ghana, so the remaining seventy percent are exported into the four uh, European countries. So as it stands now, we can only do with the 30%. So the rest are lying idle at the ports. So with this new initiative or policy, do you, um, are new processors coming into the market? No, new processors are not coming into the market because the uh, cost of setting up uh, processing infrastructure here in Ghana is very high. It's very high, so it's, it, it's very difficult to, as a business person or as an individual, to start your own chocolate processing here. So are you saying that the government didn't, um, so what do you feel about the policy? Are you saying the government didn't put that into consideration or what do you feel about the policy? From, a, from an exporter's point of view? What I would say is that it's something we've been doing yearly. We buy, we send them. So we never anticipated that there will be a time where we wouldn't be able to export them. So I don't think it was in the plan. Okay, so but what the, um, with the president's speech, uh, sweet, um, speech in Switzerland, I think that was a year ago before the actually yes. um, policy took effect. So there was a year, yes. he had announced it a year before. So there was no nobody coming into the market, no opportunity for a PPP or... 
it's been is it uh, the other processes the multinationals they've made it very difficult to go into business with them so it, it, it's very difficult for any other person to come in for the for the time if the government doesn't come in if the government doesn't step in and say no we are going to process our own cocoa or most of our cocoa and depend on an, uh, individuals to do that it will be very difficult it will be the multinationals who will come and then set up their factories here it wouldn't be the Ghanaian or the african individuals coming to do that so so currently the small other farmers right now what are they um so are they currently not selling there's no market for them yes they are selling they, they bring the cocoa but there's no there's no money to pay so we, we take it on credit most of the uh, purchasing players take it on credit hoping the government will have money and then pay pay them back so what is the current situation now so is the government doing anything is there like a stakeholder meeting where you're having discussions with the government regarding this policy uh the chief executive director of cocoa board was invited to parliament somewhere last year and then he said he was going farmers were going to be paid the following week but as he, as, he, as we talk now they're still not being paid okay it's quite unfortunate especially for the smaller farmers that depend on this well what is for your own advice what what do you see as a take for the future because one of the key um things for this policy is to stop being dependent on you know to add value to our raw materials so, so that you can get you know better uh, market value so what is your own advice on the way forward is it uh, the culture of uh, consuming cocoa is lacking here in Africa, in Ghana, in Africa? We don't consume chocolate as the whites do the European countries do. So what they, the government need to do, what or what we need to do as a country, is to first promote the chocolate consumption, create awareness especially in where they, 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 they grow the cocoa beans. Can you imagine one, most of my farmers don't even know what chocolate are. If I go around and give them chocolate, they ask, what is that? And I tell them this, what, this from what you produce. They don't even know about chocolate. So the awareness is down and then government has to give them tax incentives, especially the local manufactured people who want to go into chocolate manufacturing it was a chocolate industry is about 100 billion dollar industry and we as the second largest grain uh, cocoa producing country we only get about 1.5 percent of the whole 100 billion which doesn't make sense and, and no go ahead and it seems we are always we are we are okay with the 1.5 billion dollars that comes our way because we don't want to add value to the raw beans and then sell. We so are, we are it, okay with so do you want to be okay with the less than two billion dollars or would you know how to access more? So do you know you feel like you should be able to add value so you can access more? We should we should be able to add value to what we produce, which we, we shouldn't be just taking out know, there sending out the raw materials to the to the wives and then they intend bring the same product they add value to the same product and then sell it at a higher price hundred then they get a chunk of it and then you see our farmers in a very poor state no clean no good drinking waters no electricity no virtually no social amenities they don't so even enjoy the procedures one so bright Again, from someone that's been has experience in the value chain, what is your way forward? What is your way forward? What would you advise your government? One, the local chocolate uh, manufacturing should should try and get markets in other African countries. There should be awareness. They should create awareness. 
they should be able to bump into other African countries with our chocolates. It, it takes a deliberate effort. It is going to be very difficult as it stands now. With the cost of production, even setting up a good chocolate manufacturing uh, company is very high. The cost is very high. And the whites have made it virtually impossible to get the best machines to get. So it's going to be, so it takes a, a determined leader to do that. And if you are not determined, you can't, you can't do that. And then there should be research and development into the local manufacturing companies. They should, they should engage research and uh, development their services so that they, they will know where to touch the right places to touch. These are some of the things they need to do. And then, then there, there should be education. There should be education. And then they should, they, 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 they should inculcate the culture of eating chocolates into the youth, especially the young ones. I remember our president saying the last time he spoke that uh, we will process our chocolate cocoa here and then school children will be given cocoa products every day when they come to school. We are all happy because it was a, very, a step in the, in the right direction. But as of now, he hasn't seen the, the light of day. So if we are even able to give the school children cocoa products every day, every day, people will get to know. The more you, you taste cocoa, the more you become attached to cocoa. Because cocoa here, chocolate here in Africa is a luxury. Yes. It's, it's a luxury you, you, you can. So not many even the middle class people not many people do uh, can afford chocolate or so want to taste chocolate so right do you think they should um there's also an option of also i understand what you mean like you know getting people to even get the concept of chocolate but there's also a market out there so do you think we should also be able to process and then sell what we are processing as well that is another market we should that is the first thing we 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 should have been thinking as a as a country or as a continent the cocoa growing countries in africa number one the people who consume the chocolates the most don't produce cocoa in 2018 i was in nigeria Etioni, for the cocoa festival and you have this a uh, holland professor he teaches chocolate in the university he came down with some of his students and I was taking them around and I was showing them cocoa tree, cocoa pot, cocoa beans. Can you imagine? He teaches chocolate in the university. They don't even know, they, they've not seen a cocoa pot before, but they teach chocolate. And such, and I think the education that, that we should start teaching our, our universities and and at the senior high schools, chocolate manufacturing, chocolate uh, cocoa processing. So um, what, before I wrap up, I want to ask one question. Does this policy also mean the opportunities for investment for cocoa processing in Ghana? Does it mean that the continent, the country is open for investment in terms of cocoa processing? Yes, it, is it that chocolate industry is a very big, industry and then with just the raw material you get about one to five percent but when you start when investors come in and start processing the chocolates is about 80 90 percent of the total share so there, there there will be there will be the need for investors to come around to invest massively in the cocoa sector in education in the trainings uh, person is it, it almost everything and then we get the maximum out of it as a country and as as a continent we cannot be doing the same thing every year now they are not taking cocoa see we are stuck we don't even know how to go about it but if we were to process our own cocoa here we wouldn't even be thinking about whether somebody is banning importation or so we, we wouldn't even care but now it's, it's, it's become a very big problem for us as a country because we don't have use for our own beans. Yeah. So we need investors here. 
And I'll Definitely. be glad if the a time a time will come that we wouldn't even be exporting robins to any European country. We process everything here and then sell the final the finished products to them. And that's you know that's, that's you know, the way to go. And it, there's nothing like that, adding value that, to our product. Yes, that's Thank the way you. to go. Thank you very much, Brian. It's quite unfortunate, but I hope uh, I know the policy means good. So I hope this initial, I want to say initial shock, but I hope it works out. And thank you. I hope the initiative drives economic growth in Ghana and Africa as a whole. Thank you very much for your time. I appreciate it. And keep me posted on what's going on. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we'll do it. <laughs>